presented by Gate City Bank for a better way of life. And we've made our way through the first couple weeks of the regular season for both the NDSU men and women. Plenty of successes so far for both playing against stiff competition. And welcome in to the Bison Basketball Show. My name is Jeff Colhane here, of course, with the head coach of the Herd on the Hardwood, David Richmond. Coach, great to have you in with us once again. Start to the season, early season successes. You played some tough teams so far this year as well. Your thoughts on what we've seen out of your club so far? I don't know if I could have said it much better, Jeff. I mean, we've gotten tested in the travel, the logistical area, and obviously the opponent. It, it was great to get, um, you know, our feet underneath us a little bit at home against Concordia. And uh, really, really proud of the guys, and I don't know if I've been more proud, Jeff, considering the circumstances of what went into that last Friday night's or Friday afternoon's victory against Cal Poly. And um, that you, we talk about culture a lot, Jeff, within our program, and that was nothing more than a culture win. And and to come out with a road victory uh, feels great. Um, you know, feel like so many opportunities slipped through our hands uh, against UNLV uh, on Monday night. And when you go on the road and a good opponent, you put yourself in those situations to have an opportunity down the stretch. Man, it hurts a little bit and and we knew going into Tuesday night it was going to be a challenge um, and it was, certainly was a challenge and and you know we're not into excuses uh, we're also into communicating facts and the end of that road trip you know traveling six days or excuse yeah. me six hours day of the game and playing against a really good opponent in, in the University of Arizona and they've proven that you know just uh, yes. the other night they, they take Arizona and they just wipe the floor with them by 18 so uh, I knew going into that game and, and had a better understanding coming out of that game that <laughs> Arizona is a really good ball club and that being said just the adversity that this group is going through uh, being without Sam Greasel mm -hmm. uh, which is going to be here for a little bit of time uh, provides some adversity that I think young teams and, and in a lot of ways we're still a young group Jeff that we need to go through and grow through to be where we need to be ultimately in February and March. Yeah couldn't have said it better myself as well let's roll through the highlights looking back at the season opener against Concordia coach to open things up here in 2021 and 2022 this is a game more about the Bison, your guys came out, played hard, played well, took care of business back a week or so ago. Yeah, and, and again, I think our, that adversity started a little bit where Sam, uh, we started to experience some of the things that ultimately led to where we are today with Sam um, in that game. And, and again, you talk about adversity, and, and adversity is is dealt with by leadership. And, and you're seeing right now a big dunk from Rock, and, and Rock was just tremendous. And we didn't come out of the gates, we didn't finish the first half well, uh, we didn't play very well coming out of the gates in the second half and, and Rocky just really you know vocally energy wise put us on our back and, and you're, you're seeing some of the talent Jeff and, and you're seeing some of the length and athleticism and, and and the big thing with that is just getting that an understanding to bring it every day in practice uh, to bring it every day in a, in a road game um, and, and just shrinking that margin for error that you that you don't have really when you go on the road and um, but, but but make no mistake to go out and take care of business and get a 40 some point victory feels good as you take a look at our Gate City Bank scoreboard here, the combo, Rocky Cruiser, Grant Nelson on display in that game. Obviously, they're going to have an advantage, but they showed up big time, especially in the second half. Yeah, I mean, you could talk about an advantage but in, in going into things, but then it's something to go out and take care of business. And no matter who you play, when the lights come on, you got to take care of those advantages. And, and to those guys' credit, and to all of our guys' credit, we, we finished that game extremely well. The Bison then would uh, hit the road and uh, open things up on uh, that West Coast road swing. An afternoon road game against Cal Poly, Rocky Cruiser with two big baskets late in the game helping propel NDSU to a 60 to 57 victory over the Mustangs you talked about adversity let's talk about the game and specifically Rocky Cruiser that leadership again that's a back and forth affair all throughout the afternoon and Rock hit some huge huge shots your guys has rocked that afternoon in that game yeah I mean, I mean you, you talk about that game is not going into the Naismith Hall of Fame for college basketball Jeff <laughs> and, and uh, you you weren't uh, able to be out there with us but it wasn't pretty for a lot of it it was Tyree Eady's first game back and, and he was just he had some rust on him um, but when you talk about toughness and leadership Tyree and Rocky just weren't gonna let us get beat and, and they were huge down the stretch and um, we had a bunch of other guys step up Willie Guy hit some big shots you look at Desmond McKinney played 27 minutes 
defense in that game. Just everybody contributed in, in some big moments, but when it came down to it and, and, and the game was on the line, those two made some terrific plays. The other guy, too, that was that was really good in that game was Malik Harden-Hayes, and you're starting to see just more energy and, and more consistency out of Malik, and it's something that's very exciting for us to continue to build on. You mentioned culture win, and it was a bizarre start to the trip. I know we've talked about Sam Griesel before. Um, how did your team respond to that situation, and how is Sam feeling right now? Yeah, Jeff, I mean, and, and I don't know how many details I can get into, nor do I really want to get into, but but it, it was a it was a scary night for us Thursday night, and, and it's scary because of uh, the circumstances, but also just what Sam Griesel means to us as a player, more so as, as a person, and and the guys are so tight. We are we are a family, and, and they, the way they handled things was you care, and when you care, you're thinking about that, and um, um, Sam's going to be ultimately all right, thankfully, um, but but there's a lot of our, on, our, on all of our minds Friday afternoon, and, and, and you saw that in the way we played. Uh, but again, to, to all of our guys' credit, they, they really responded in the right way and, and finished that game with the way we wanted to, at least a one-point victory. Yep. The Bison jump out to a 2-0 and record to begin this 2021-2022 regular season. We'll take a break on the back half. Take a look at back-to-back -back games, two games and two nights against really good opponents. That's coming up on the Bison Basketball Show. Better starts with convenience. Our 43 convenient locations make running errands easy. Better starts with trust. You can trust that your pre-approval is guaranteed on closing time, which is one less thing to worry about. Better starts with saving you money. No ATM fees and no minimum balances mean how you spend your money is up to you. Because at Gate City Bank, better starts with you. And this means better ways to brighten your day. Gate City Bank, for a better way of life. Welcome back to the Bison Basketball Show. Well, the second part of that road swing for David Richmond and his Bison basketball team heading out into the desert. A Monday night game against UNLV, Tuesday night versus Arizona. And coach, this was a game, even without Sam, I know your team was excited about the opportunity and it was a hard fought game over 40 minutes. Yeah, you know, and, and that's that's the one where, you know, it's the sand in your hands, the water in your hands, Jeff. You feel like you let one slip away when, when you had some adversity going into it without Sam. Uh, we had a couple guys just not shoot the ball like they did, uh, but but to but to our guys' credit, you know that they, they put them put ourselves in a terrific position to finish that game. We just couldn't quite get over that hump, and uh, you know down down the stretch when we were down, we put we put on our press. I was pleased to see us execute some things like that. Um, and we had a chance at the end, and, and uh, it, but also those chances are learning experiences. When you go on the road, when you go on the road against good teams, your margin for error, it, you know, is pretty slim, and and we, we learned that we learned that the hard way uh, on Monday night. But I know no doubt we'll be better for it going forward. Coach, what do you think your team learned about themselves in this game? A more athletic, you talk about our length. Obviously, you play these teams like UNLV.
UNLV. They're going to be longer as well as we take a look at our Gate City Bank scoreboard. What, what's the learning experiences here in this game for your team? Well, they were right there, Jeff, and, and right there is good, but right there is not good enough. And, and we've put ourselves in a position to be right there and against good teams, athletic teams on the road. Uh, but we've got to we've got to break some stubborn habits, you know, and and and, and just to push through because our, our expectations, like they are every year, are really high. And, and as we go forward, games like this UNLV game, no matter who we've got, what kind of parts that we have uh, going into those games, we feel like you know, we're, we're ready there and it, we're ready and should be able to compete against anybody in the, in the country. Yeah, Rocky Cruiser is ninth career double-double. Malik Harden Hayes played very well, knocked out a couple threes, 12 points in that contest, falling just short. Desmond McKinney, a chance at the rim to tie the game that was ultimately blocked by the running Rebel defense. All right, tough situation, Coach. You hit the bus, you're on the road, and as you and I talked about, this is an Arizona team under new head coach Tommy Lloyd who came in from Gonzaga that is cooking with Crisco right now and kind of a tough situation overall, sort of a, a rough night for us on the road in the desert. It was, and, and like you and I talked about post-game, Jeff, let me first and foremost, just Arizona is a very good basketball club. Coach Lloyd has done a tremendous job of, of getting his pieces, and you can see already the, the Gonzaga implant, yeah, imprint, uh, blueprint that, that, that he has on, on that group and that culture. Um, that being said, going back and watch it, you know, and, and again, if you let excuses settle in, you're going to have a, a program full of excuses and uh, our conversion defense, you know, our, our offense leading to our poor defense is some things that we've got to focus in on and, and we have the last three days in practice to get better. No matter who you're going to play, it, it, those are controllable habits that, that, that need to be staples game in and game out. And um, again, Arizona's a good team and they're going to make you do those things. But there's also when you, when you go and you play and you get exposed like we did on Tuesday night, there's some plenty of learning opportunities for our group. I always kind of try and transplant the matchup into a Summit League game and how their speed, there's some moves that our guys made where, hey, that's going to be a bucket yep. in the Summit League, but on a night like this, as you take a look at our Gate City Bank scoreboard here, it's just it's it's a tougher ask overall. Yeah, there was a play in the second half, Jeff, where Malik, who is long and athletic, goes up to rise into a left-handed jump hook, and, and I, I think it was 10 or 0 goes up and blocks it. Yeah. And and that was an explosive play by that young man. And, and to your point, you're right. In, in, in the Summit League, I know for sure, I don't know if Malik makes that, but he's able to get that off. And then there was plenty of plays where uh, we've got to figure out those things because as we go forward, we have expectations, and we have high expectations, and hopefully we get an expectation uh, um, or hopefully we get an opportunity, I should say, to play a team like Arizona down in the road. Yep. Coach, final thoughts as your team now moves in to the final half of this month of November in non-conference Well, it's, play. it's underway, Jeff, and it's underway against some real quality opponents. It's underway against um, some home teams. It's against some, some um, tough uh, scenarios that we've been through, some adversity. Um, but I like that, Jeff, in, in, a, in a weird way. I think that's how you grow. That's how you become better when it ultimately matters, and, and that's in February and March. Yep. Coach, happy Thanksgiving to you and your team and family. Thanks for the time. Happy Thanksgiving to you and all of Bison Nation. It's an exciting, fun time of year. Absolutely. Men's basketball coach David Richmond coming up. Jory Collins joins us. We take a look at the start of the year for the NDSU women. That's on the way next. Another rock and roll weekend. Burgers. Better with Pepsi. Before the fans show up, game plans are being made. 
It's pregame preparation at your locally owned Bottle Barn Liquors. This is your time to explore our field. Isles of tailgating traditions. Kick off your game day with Hall of Fame players like Truly, Mick Ultra, and High Noon. You make the call. Whatever the game plan, you're sure to score big savings. Winners know. The game day starts at Bottle Barn Liquors. This one's for every sports fan who just spent the entire game explaining to someone the entire game. You've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. And welcome back to the Bison Basketball Show. Now joined by NDSU women's head coach Jory Collins. Coach, great to have you here. Two weeks into the regular season, you guys have faced some really, really good competition home and away. Your thoughts on the start to the season for you and your team? Well, it's been a little up and down, Jeff. Obviously, we got off to a terrific start at Milwaukee against a really good club. Uh, and I thought we were out of the gates rolling. We've stumbled here a, a few times in a row, just some inconsistencies with our team. Uh, but like you said, we're playing high quality opponents um, and you have to be able to, to be there day in and day out and make those plays be a little more consistent individually to win to, against teams like that. I know when you were looking in the pregame at this this schedule, you kind of looked at it and you said, all right, there's going to be some spots here where we're definitely going to be challenged overall. And I think you've gotten that to, to a lot of degrees so far in the season. Yeah, you know, you look at Milwaukee, Green Bay, you and I, all those teams were picked top three in, in their respective conferences. And, um, you know, we knew that going in. That's a tough road trip to go out and start on the road back to back against, uh, you know, the second and third rate team in the Horizon League. Um, but that's what we want to be. I yeah. mean, if you want to be a good team, you got to go out and play good teams. You got to learn about yourself here in November and December. Uh, and then find the ways to improve and get ourselves ready for league play coming up in a couple months. Well, let's take a look at our scoreboard brought to you by Gate City Bank. Recapping the win at Milwaukee, a 69-58 victory. Man, Ryan Cobbins, coach, I know has been playing well, not only in this game, but for you here all season long early on in the year. Heaven Hamling with 11 points as well. And this was a game where first game of the year, getting your legs under you against a good team on the road, and it was that second quarter where you guys started playing your brand of basketball. Yeah, felt like. I, I was... Uh, really really pleased uh, defensively in that game the way we guarded the ball uh, you know Katie Deaton and Abby Schulte especially uh, were just dynamite on the wing uh, obviously offensively Ryan came out of the gate first game of the year and and obviously in, through our first four games has has played phenomenal on the offensive end uh, you know we're still looking for that second third leading score but that night it was good enough defensively uh, you know for us to get a win on the road 69 58 season opening win at Milwaukee great second quarter by the herd propelled them to that success and they take a look two nights later two afternoons later I should say playing at Green Bay another really good team coach out of the Horizon League and he got to a great start in this game and, and we're playing well early on yeah you know we had a really good first quarter um, we came out of the gates I think it was 1914 maybe at the end of the first quarter we're moving the ball well finishing some plays we've really stumbled coming out of the half um, that's been an issue for us in, in our last couple ball games as well. And, um, you know, they were juiced up for their home opener. Mm -hmm. uh, they'd gotten embarrassed a couple days before they played us. And that was a, uh, you know, a really motivated Green Bay team on that particular day. Uh, and they played really well in the second half. Heaven Hamley leads the way with 20 points. And she's always a player that you know is going to be ready if there's a big shot and you guys need to push offensively. I feel like that's always something you can count on with heaven on that end of the floor. Yeah, you know, she she's that kind of player. She wants those kind of shots. We feel pretty comfortable with her taking those. You know, she's drawing so much attention right now early in the year. And, um, you know, Ryan's doing a good job of taking some pressure off of her. But we need another couple guys to come along and, uh, and help relieve that for her. What were some of your biggest, I guess, teaching moments when you look back on that game with your group? With the group well, you know, the up? area we didn't do well in that game, Jeff. Middle ball screen defense. Um, you know, they had a, a, a super senior in Pingle that I think she had 22 points and, and nine assists. So she was really responsible for, for 40 plus of their 70 points. Uh, just in the middle of the floor, our communication wasn't as good as it needed to be on, on getting her defended and she was making plays for herself. Uh, and against other people. So uh, that was a great learning experience to be able to watch that, talk about that, and, and try to get some of those things shored up. The Bison women with a split in the uh, road trip in Wisconsin. Impressive win against Milwaukee. Now back home taking on two really good teams at the Shield Center in Northern Iowa and Montana. We'll take a look at those games with the head coach, Jory Collins, when we come back on the Bison Basketball Show. Yeah. <laughs> 
burgers. Better with Pepsi. <sighs> Better starts with convenience. Our 43 convenient locations make running errands easy. Better starts with trust. You can trust that your pre-approval is guaranteed on closing time. Which is one less thing to worry about. Better starts with saving you money. No ATM fees and no minimum balances mean how you spend your money is up to you. Because at Gate City Bank, better starts with you. And this means better ways to brighten your day. Gate City Bank, for a better way of life. It's time appliances had a personality. Yours and the professionals at Regals can help with the Cafe Appliances Remodel Reward. Receive up to a $2,000 rebate with the purchase of select Cafe Appliances now through December 31st at Regals. Plus, free delivery, free setup, and free recycling of your old appliances. Find out why no one delivers more value than Regals. GE, good things for life. Regals, 609 Main Avenue, Moorhead. This one's for every sports fan who just spent the entire game explaining to someone the entire game. You've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. And welcome back to the Bison Basketball Show presented by Gate City Bank. Coach, after the split in Wisconsin, the win over Milwaukee and the, uh, the loss to Green Bay, great opportunities against really good opponents coming into the Shield Center this past week with Northern Iowa and Montana. What was the preparation like leading up to two very, very challenging games last week in those two? Well, you know, we were excited, obviously, looking forward to the opportunity to, to get home and play in front of our own fans. and. Um, obviously test ourselves against a really good UNI team. I think UNI was a, a WNIT Final Four team last year and uh, have a whole bunch of players back. Um, you know, we played them extremely well here last year and, um, you know, knew it was going to be a very similar game. Uh, that particular game, Jeff, we, uh, about a four-minute stretch was the difference in the basketball game. I think it was 8-8 in the first quarter. We turned the ball over in five out of seven possessions and then it's 16-8. It's 12 at half. We turn it over four out of five, and it got to 15 or 16. And um, You know, that was the difference. That's the inconsistencies that we're having right now. But obviously, when you watch, there's nothing there that's not fixable for us. Mm -hmm. um, it was frustrating because you, you, we feel like we're, we're not playing up to our potential. And, um, you know, those guys are good enough to make you pay. Um, and, and they did so. Uh, pretty regularly in that game. We had some good performances like we have been. You know, Ryan Cobbins, like we said, has been really consistent for us. Um, but defensively, we were just a little disconnected in that game and, and didn't give ourselves the best chance. I know you tried to go to a little zone in this, in this game and in this week as well. Kind of walk us through that thought process as you talk about trying to find more connectivity on the defensive end of the yeah, floor. Yeah, you know, we, we, that was probably something, you know, when I look back at the UNI game, we probably should have tried that a little bit earlier just to change it up and get them out of rhythm. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we were able to do that a little bit in the fourth quarter and, and cut it to a manageable number. Uh, probably should have done that a little bit earlier. Um, you know, and then carry that over into our next game as well. But, uh, you know, the way those guys run, they run a set play down about every time. And if you're not having great communication uh, and really connected defensively, they can make you pay, especially when they're making shots. Well, you mentioned it after you see Heaven's three right there. You're trying to chip away in the second quarter. Tanya Warren, she's the dean of the Missouri Valley Conference in women's basketball. Felt like they remembered last year uh, a little bit what you guys did yep. to them as we take a look at our Gate City Bank uh, scoreboard there. Felt like they remembered and, and you got their best shot for sure. Yeah, you know, Tanya's is an awesome coach and, and she has been for a long time. I've known her for a really long time. And, uh, you know, I knew what we were getting into when we, you know, signed up to play those guys again this year and to go to their place next year. But like we said before, those are our aspirations uh, to be co a program like that. Uh, and you got to test yourself against those guys. And, um, obviously, you learn a lot about yourself. Our players learn a lot about uh, each other and, and where we have to improve. And, uh, you know, that's the opportunity to do it. 
A near double-double for Ryan Cobbins. Again, she has had a great start to the season as uh, the Kansas City native. Definitely worth the price of admission with Jory Collins' squad and this NDSU women's basketball team. Uh, you move into the, the second game of last week against Montana, Coach, and you go right to the highlights here. And I'll tell you what, what a start uh, Saturday night on uh, November the 20th. What a start by your team, a tremendous first half of basketball in the first 20 minutes or so. Yeah, you know, we came out and we ran a little uh, little token 2-2-1, zone press, back into some zone, just to give our team a little little different feel, yeah. a little opportunity to mix it up a little bit and, and maybe play with a little more instinctually uh, on the defensive end. And um, I thought they did a great job with it. It's not something that we do all the time or very regularly. Uh, but they did a great job of just, uh, we forced some turnovers early, which led to some buckets. We had Montana off balance pretty good in the first half. Um, you know, as you see, Ryan obviously was sensational down the stretch. Yep. Uh, we called her number, it got into a back and forth game. Uh, we called her number about four times in a row and she answered the bell every single time. Um, it, it was disappointing. You know, we needed one more timeout at the end of that game yep. uh, to have a chance that we didn't have. And, uh, you know, you got to tip your cap to Montana. Uh, two road game swing for them and, and able to hit a shot at the buzzer to, to beat us. Drew up a great play for Abby Schulte right in front of your bench to tie it up with under 10 seconds to go. Walk us through that. Yeah, that recall. was, uh, you know, with eight, you know, the possession before, um, we were trying to get a two for one opportunity and maybe, maybe get one off. We didn't get the shot off in time, so they had the shot. You know, they had 30 second shot clock and all the time left. They were able to score, I think, with eight left. Uh, we were trying to get, obviously, a quick basket. Um, made a great pass. Ryan, we got it into Ryan. Abby made a back cut as the inbounder. Uh, dropped it to her and finished. Obviously, just uh, maybe too quick. Uh, six seconds left on the clock for those guys. But that was a, another learning experience, opportunity to play in situational basketball in the last 90 seconds and, and learn from that. Emily Dietz, you see those eight rebounds. I believe six on the offensive end for you as uh, the super senior making things happen. All right, Coach, coming up here, about 30 seconds left. Coming up, you've got uh, a big opportunity this next weekend heading out facing a team in Wyoming from the Mountain West Conference. Yeah, you know, those guys are... Uh, Playing really well, I think they made uh, might have made the NCAA tournament last year. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, finished and uh, really well in their conference tournament. Have a lot of players back. Uh, those guys are a really good basketball team. Well coached, veteran coach, veteran players. Um, another opportunity for us to to get after it. Yep, coach. Happy Thanksgiving to your family, your team as well, and uh, best of luck here over the next few weeks to the rest of November. All right, thanks, Jeff. Happy Thanksgiving to you too. There you go. That's the head coach, Jory Collins. My name is Jeff Colhane. Big thanks to the entire team here at WDAY. Come out, see both these squads, folks. The NDSU men and women. High expectations this year. Happy Thanksgiving. Have a good one. The Bison Basketball Show is presented by Gate City Bank for a better way of life. This is the North Dakota State University Bison Sports Network from Learfield.